Playing Skull and Bones is like walking into a party and taking an unmarked pill hoping to get blitzed. Instead, you end up on the couch chilling with the cat because the pill was actually Ritalin and you have undiagnosed ADHD. Those anticipating a fantasy pirate wonderland weekend will be sorely disappointed, but others might relish in discovering a mellow seafaring side of themselves they didn't know existed. This game is available on PC, PS5, and Xbox for $59.99 at base price, $89.99 for premium. You can also access the game with a Ubisoft Plus account or free trial the game for 8 hours on PC. As before, I'll give my impression of the first two hours, say whether the game shows enough to consider a commitment or a refund within that time frame, and then roll out the rest of the review. I promise to be a good little pirate. I'm congratulated five times, and then and only then do I get to lay eyes on the play button. I'm offered a lion cub with an eye patch, but it's a trap. Ubisoft serves me an indignant pop-up as if to say, everyone, look. This guy hasn't even played the game yet and he's already fiending to buy something. He has the money problem, not us. Be that as it may, I've never made 700 Frenchmen go on strike due to poor wages. But that's enough of this petty back and forth you started. Let's get sailing. Where to? The Indian Ocean, 17th century for boat training. The ship feels shippy. It's got the weight, it's got the heft, a bit cumbersome, but graceful as a duck after properly aligning myself. I don't know what absolute chat of a crewmate I've hired to aim, fire, and reload my cannons, but he must have eaten all of his fruits and veggies and the table growing up because there's no resistance whatsoever. It's not bad, I just wasn't anticipating a third pirate shooter. Just as I wasn't anticipating the Spanish Inquisition, or Armada. It's hard to see over the screaming of my crew, half panicking, half cheering as I snipe the glowing red spots of my enemy. I don't think these are even Spanish ships. I'll ask him. ¿Dónde está la biblioteca? I ram into one of the ships for a barrel stuff. With my starboard full of their port side, I rain down hell, gleefully discovering that my cannons are fully automatic. There's a lot happening and I'm loving it. I am the knife slicing through the water. I am the deadliest shot this side of the Indian Ocean. I am the greatest pirate you've ever heard of. I am sunk. It's at this moment that I took the time to fix my recording software, so I'm missing a few minutes of the introductory mission, including the character customization. Wasn't anything special. I had a mind to redo the intro, but you can't. There's only one perpetual save tied to your account. But trust me, walking on land feels awful, like a newborn baby giraffe doing its best Captain Jack Sparrow impression. The head honcho of the port sends me around on busy work and informs me that we are pirate rejects pillaging to make a name for ourselves or something along those lines. I was dozing off, partly because the game is kind of dry and partly because these waters are incredibly soporific, sleep-inducing due to its calm and easygoing traits. There's the word of the day for you. I get to my first objective and find that I can't get off the boat. The land cannot be explored on foot. Gathering materials is a quick time event mini-game. If I did fall asleep, this is a strange dream. But it kept going exactly in this fashion and I wasn't waking up. The missions change up a little. Sometimes I'm gathering supplies, sometimes I'm blowing up a ship or a port, but at its core it all feels samey and subdued. More routine than rebellious. More Roger than jolly if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Maybe this pirate life ain't the life for me after all. And with that, we've now hit the refund window time limit. Unless you're here for multiplayer, the game's essentially shown a vertical slice of what's on offer. The game exists in a fairly neutral emotional zone and keeps that all the way through never exciting me or disappointing me too much for too long in either direction. There is a sense of build-up as if there is something over the horizon, but that's because this is a live-service game designed to remain open-ended. It's always going to feel that way. If you love the game for what's here now, then keep it. If you feel like you're only sailing to see what's promised beyond that horizon, leave it. You can't catch the horizon. I believe the average player buys games based on what a game is now, not what someone promised a game would be or could one day be. But seeing as this was a major follow-up from a big name like Ubisoft, it's worth a side note of comparison for people who want to know how this game measures up to Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Well, by comparison, Skull and Bones feels as if someone squeezed all the juice out of Black Flag, baked it, then ringed it, then baked it, and ringed it some more for 10 years just to be sure this game came out as dry, as stiff, and as bland as possible. Without that point of comparison, Skull and Bones is passable at best. Not the most desirable adjective when describing something meant for entertainment. See, because it feels like instead of targeting one specific type of gamer to excite, Skull and Bones plays it safe and tries their best to not offend anyone. It's got a little something for Dad. The sailing is smooth, slow, and methodical in that it's about the journey, not the destination kind of way. 
but don't expect a surplus of historical accuracy or attention to detail you'd get from a Euro truck simulator or a War Thunder. We still want your kids to play too, otherwise they'll grow estranged because they can't man the sails properly. Who of us hasn't been to that therapy session? Dad loved a boat more than he loved me. The kids are more than welcome to play with Dad in his pirate game and keep the family together since the boat has a stamina bar, fast travel, and fully automatic cannons. Let's get Mom in on the fun as well with routine RPG fetch quests. You can't really get off the boat except for in select ports and those are tightly fenced in so she doesn't wander off into the jungle. She's usually into these kind of games for the story anyhow. Perfect, I hope she likes it lukewarm to account for all the age gaps and modern sensibilities. But you don't really need to engage with the story since most of the gear can be acquired through different sellers. And it's not like gearing a ship is a delicate operation. Just acquire enough gear score to keep your boat level on par with others and don't attack anything with a big red number hovering over it. Care as much or as little as you like, says Ubisoft. But definitely care about the multiplayer because this is a live service game after all. And we need you to come back seasonally. And even then, you don't need to care about that either because PvP is something you opt into. And you'll hardly run into anyone except when you're doing the same quest and need to wait 15 minutes for your target to respawn because someone else got to it before you did. And it's all leading up to a grindy endgame where Skull and Bones reveals its true colors as Pirate Tycoon. You deliver precious cargo around the map for a few pieces of eight, a most valuable currency used to unlock late game gear. And I hope you brought a book to read because fast travel's disabled. And it hardly gives you any money. The real money comes from PvP events where you can take over parts of the island for production of rum, silk, iPhones, what have you. It's set up in a way so that single player progress is painstakingly slow and it's already dull to begin with. But it's funny because I claimed a few pieces of the island for myself because no one else showed up to fight for it. I had to check to make sure I was still playing a Ubisoft game and not a Zynga game because it felt structured exactly like Pirates Rule the Caribbean. One of those old social media games where you have to invite your friends to get anything done. If you remember Mafia Wars or Farmville, then you know what I'm talking about. And that's it, it's a bit of everything and a lot of nothing. In the Venn diagram of things people like about MMOs, things people like about pirate games, things people like about looter shooters, etc, etc. This game occupies the tiniest sliver of commonality being something to do. It's so inoffensive and mild that it makes people who hate this game appear unhinged, raised by fathers with dangerously high and unattainable standards. Why don't you like Skull and Bones? It didn't do anything wrong. It didn't do anything right. That sounds irrational, doesn't it? But I too felt irrational hatred many times as I was playing this game. In the absence of any tangible emotional stimuli, my brain hallucinated reasons to hate Skull and Bones, just to feel something. In reality, I have only three objectively genuine complaints. Firstly, there's a lot of loading screens and they take forever, and sometimes my character gets stuck idling between the transitions, unable to do anything until I restart. And then sometimes the quitting menu gets stuck. Surely we've figured out menu surfing in 2024. This feels like menu standing in line at the DMV. Thirdly, there's an awful high-pitched ringing sound in one of the major hubs. I thought I was going mad until I googled that it is an actual known issue. I high-tilted back to the Roaring Sea to drown out the tinnitus. Giving Skull and Bones its day in court as well, there were three moments of excitement for me, genuine excitement. The start raised my pulse, and there was a mission somewhere in the middle involving a crazy storm and rogue pirates flanking me on all sides. And the last one probably wasn't intentional, but it was always amusing whenever the game sent me off to plunder for loot I could just buy at ports, because I'd fast travel and buy them instead of engaging in combat. The quest rewards and time saved outweighed the cost in travel. Then when I go to turn them in, all the pirates are amazed by the ruthlessness of Ronald McDonald, captain of ye old McRib. Ironic that fair trade and commerce felt naughtier than piracy. Any other complaints I might have fall into two subjective categories. This game could be so much more, and there is no shortage of great games I could be playing right now. But just as I won't hold the past against Skull and Bones, I won't give its future any points either. I don't care for live service promises or roadmaps. Maybe one day it gets more interesting, and we'll talk about it then. Or perhaps the whole affair sinks. All I care about is what the game is now, and right now, this game averages out as average. Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillermo made the claim that Skull and Bones was the first quadruple A game ever made. Actually, the quote goes, it's a really full triple dot 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 quadruple A game that will deliver in the long run. Either he misspoke and meant quadruple from the start, or he flipped his delivery on triple quadruple, which would be 12 A's. Regardless, it feels more like 1 A stretched so thin it becomes translucent, through which I can see the silhouette of Ives Guillermo's grubby hand slowly making a creep and reach for my wallet. 
This video is sponsored by Blood Servants, the upcoming cooperative hack and slash dungeon crawler. Head on over to their Steam page now to sign up for their playtest.